Thank you guys for being here. Um, obviously, great coming off a win on the road. They're always tough. Um, nice to kind of get that monkey off our back to get that win in Orlando. I know we were 0-9 in the city of Orlando, and I was part of quite a few of those losses in the past, but huge to go down there and, and get a win um, in a different situation uh, versus a very good USF team. Obviously, like every week, our focus now moves on to our next opponent in North Texas. Um, you know, excited about the opportunity to play uh, a night game and be back in front of our great fans. Um, they, they've got a tremendous team, you know, much improved. They're five and one. They have the fifth best offense in all of college football and the fourth highest rated passing offense in all of college football. So it's going to present a tremendous challenge. North Texas continues to um, change up what they do defensively, so we got to be well prepared for that. Um, but we're excited to be back in front of our crowd. Also want to announce that, as, as we've seen, as part of the D'Angelo Williams Foundation, that $5 from every ticket purchased will actually go to mammograms in Memphis. So what a, a wonderful thing uh, that we're able to do and, and can't wait to get out there and have a great week of preparation in order for our next game. Right, this game then, um, the defense had one more game against Navy, but outside of that, just how are you liking what you've seen out of that unit so far? Yeah, look, I mean, uh, I agree. Like, I think they're playing really, really well. You go back to this past game, three takeaways, a touchdown. I mean, they're, they're doing a tremendous job. And you, right, the, the Navy game was obviously a disappointment. Um, like I've always said, hopefully that's an anomaly facing a unique offense, but we're going to continue to see different elements from that offense show up. But, you know, they're playing with, with a sen sense of demeanor. Um, they're playing a physical brand. They're running to the football. They're getting takeaways. And look, it's, it's going to be hard because there's so many challenges, right? This week coming up is one of them. But I've been quite pleased. Um, there's certainly, you know, I, I go back to last year. I don't like to compare seasons, but last year, let's call it what it is. We were one of the worst defenses in all college football. And, you know, we had to improve, and they've done a fantastic job. But like every time, right, it, it, can you be consistent with it? And uh, quite pleased Coach Hankins and staff have done a tremendous job. The, the young men in those rooms have bought into the way we're trying to play. And I think one things is what I love about that group is like all of our guys, right? Immediately, there's so many things we continue to improve upon and work on, and and uh, I, I like their attitude and approach moving forward. And on the other side of the ball, um, the offense started hot, but then obviously cooled off the rest of the game. Just what are you seeing about the offense that you want to see click? Yeah, bit? I think you know this. Even going to the last couple of games, um, you know, we're still, you know, someone said over 31 points a game. At, I don't really, it just winning, finding ways to win football games, play complimentary football, continue to own the football, right? We can't have turnovers. Um, those things are important. But, you know, finding, we're, 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 what we're seeing is, you know, we lined up for South Florida, okay? It's a team that I think was over 70% blitz uh, all the time. I mean, it was a, you know, and then two of the first three drives we score on, and guess what? They decided to stop blitzing. And so now we're seeing a defense that we hadn't, you know, hadn't done a good enough job preparing for. Um, We've got to be more efficient. Too many self-inflicted wounds, you know, it, whether it was penalties, um, you know, getting ourselves behind the sticks. We've got to be efficient because maybe those explosive plays are taking those away. So now can we put together those, you know, 10 to 14 play drives and be consistent with it? And sometimes we're not able to sustain those. Um, and, you know, we've got to find ways to be better at those things, find ways when explosives are there to be able to hit those, right? Whether it's to make the tough catch, make the right throw, protect better, all of the above. Um, and then you look at you know what we do offensively. I, I, I've got a tremendous amount of respect for our running backs, right? You look at what Brandon Thomas and Mario Anderson have done, um, but you know ultimately maybe our, our most explosive player on offense, Sutton Smith, we lost in the first quarter of the first game. I think a lot of people tend to forget that. And then by the way, that same similar type of position. I'm not comparing these guys to Kenny Gainwell or Tony Pollard, but that similar type of running back position, or Greg Duozier was doing some really good things, and then he gets hurt. And so now we're just trying to find different playmakers, find ways to make plays. And, and uh, you know, sometimes we're hitting and sometimes we're not. But that's my job to make sure we're putting our guys in the right situation to have success. Speaking Ryan of those guys, is DeLozier going to be available? And what's the status of Anderson, like, first half? Yeah. So uh, first off, Anderson's fully available. That's, you know, uh, first and foremost, you know, his actions are um, – completely despicable and uh, that's not what we do in our program and so I apologize um, on behalf of our program the way we represent ourselves in our culture um, we played a team that was one of the most penalized teams in all of college football and I think it uh, we, we fell down to that level and shame on us and uh, but we'll, we'll learn from those mistakes and improve and then um, Greg is 
uh, still day to day, I don't foresee him being able to play in this game. Uh, you know, but I, I do foresee him. He is one that I do plan on having back at some point this season. What did you say to Mar after the game? Yeah, uh, one I yeah obviously saw him at halftime and let him know my disappointment with him. Um, you know, there's it comes a time where you raise your voice, and you jump down people's throats. Um, at that point, it probably wasn't the best time to do it. I think he understood his actions. Um, and then, like I did with all the, really the stupid, let's call it what is foolish penalties we had in the game, I, I was pretty hard on our team yesterday in the team meeting. And it, it's, it's a good thing when you can be very, very tough on your team coming off a win, you know, on the road and, and let them know my disappointment, let them know what our culture is and what our standards are. And, and that's in everything we do, right? The way we behave in society. Um, Every Sunday, I try to show them mistakes that really other athletes are making, right? Especially in college football, on the field, right? Whether it's stupid penalties, um, young men that are making domestic choices that aren't appropriate, uh, finding themselves in the papers for the wrong reasons. And so I constantly am trying to educate our guys. And so uh, they understand, hey, these are the standards. This is the way we go about things. And, and the, you know, and I think uh, hopefully I got my point across. And, you know, it's not just for those fifth-year seniors also. Like, I, I sat back, I walked to the back of the meeting room, I said, listen, you freshmen, understand this is a egregious mistake and something that can never happen again in our program. So whether you guys are here for four or five more years, we're laying the groundwork to understand because maybe I didn't do a good enough job prior. Um, but I think all of our young men understand the way we go about uh, our business and handle our things. Uh, there's only one way to do it. It's the right way, and it's within our culture and our standards. So. The expectation is we'll never see that again, and if we do, then shame on me, and I've got to do a better job. Well, Ron, you said you'd say you'll take a million ugly wins and you'll win every game one nothing if they let you. How much does the eye test and how it looks matter in terms of projecting future performance and whether you can win those games against the higher quality competition? Yeah, I, I think, look, first and foremost, um, you know, had we found a way to come back versus Navy, right, we'd be sitting here at 6-0, and but we didn't, you know. Um, every game's tough. I think you sit there, Matt, and watch college football and see some of the scores, see some of the stuff that happens, the ebbs and flows of a game. You know, some of these teams are up so big and, you know, going into halftime and you're dealing with 18 to 23 year olds, the emotions, momentum. Um, you know, to be frank, I don't really care about the eye test. It's about finding ways to win football games. And um, it's always pretty, like I said, we, we can certainly improve upon offense and uh, we will. You know, there's some, even everybody would say special teams was great. No, there's still a lot of mistakes out there uh, left in special teams, especially in the kicking game. And then, you know, ultimately the defense is playing well, but man, a, a, a opponent that's doing, you know, coming into our home that's uh, doing a tremendous job on offense, so we've got to step it up. Um, every week presents its own new challenges. Um, so, you know, if we, if we end up winning a game by one point, it's 52 to 51. Yeah, maybe fans will say, oh, yeah, you're putting up points. I'll be disgusted because we didn't do what we were capable of defensively. So just finding ways, um, and it goes back to it, right? I've never been um, around a team that, you know, last year we were six in the country in scoring offense, but we were one of the worst defenses in college football. You know, reality, I don't necessarily stats, but you know, if we can be top 25 in both, I, I bet at the end of the season our record will be pretty darn good. And that's the biggest thing is going out there being f sound um, in all three phases. And that's more than anything what I want to see, right? You know. Uh, even if we had only scored 14 points or 21 points on offense uh, this past game, finding ways right to not have the foolish penalties, to go out there and play clean, um, you know, to get our completions take where they were given to us, and on the football, those things, you know, ultimately you'll say, okay, you found a way to win the football game um, in all three phases. But you know, that's the that's the whole goal, right? As a head coach, is to make sure um, that you're clicking all cylinders uh, because the, the you know I've never in my entire life seen a, a a team with a top, yeah, the number one scoring offense in the country and the number one scoring defense in the country. If they have, yeah, I haven't seen it, but I'm sure it's, yeah, that would be a hell of a football team. But a lot of things to work on. Um, and the eye test, it is what it is. We're going to go out there and put the best product we can on for the fans and, and our own expectations. Going back to Mario, just when you had that conversation with him, you said that it was a kind of response. I apologize. Uh, it's uncalled for. It's not me. Um, he got it. He nodded. You know, and that's the biggest thing is, you know, when we coach our guys, um, it's not always pretty, right? And I love to be able to compliment our guys because I still believe in, you know, you want to promote your guys and you want to build up their self-confidence and show them good, right? But you also, hey, 
a lot of times it's coaching them hard and saying, hey, this is not, whether it be on a block or it be on a, an egregious penalty, it, the reaction tells you everything. And what we tell our guys all the time is you go palms up and make that noise. That, that, that is meaning that you don't understand or under, the, the fact that we're trying to hold you accountable to your actions, right? Again, whether it's a, a bad, bad blocking assignment or an egregious penalty is educating them the right way. And, and I think, um, look, we haven't always got elicited the right responses, but his response was the right one. He understood it was a, a terrible mistake. Um, he, he's a smart young man um, that was uncharacteristic of him and within our program. And so the, the fact that he responded in the appropriate manner tells me everything. Had it been a different response, just like it is when a guy misses a tackle and tries to make an excuse about the sun being his eyes, generally then you're going to feel my wrath and it may be uh, a, a different type of response from me. Uh, but most of the time I try to talk in this manner and get my point across, but other times it, it may take a size 11 turn sideways. But the, our guys have been pretty darn good about understanding the way we do things. Coach, I actually want to leave one for you. His resting night this week, his resting night this Saturday. Nice. I'm ask you, your team's five and one. If you were to compare your team right now to a wrestler from your era, in the era from your team. Great question. One, I'm excited about wrestling night. You know, one, part of maybe in retirement, you know, Devin will come back and and uh, come to a, a Memphis. Oh, I plan to come a lot of Memphis football games in retirement. That's hopefully not anytime soon. I know some people want to rush me into it. Uh, but you and I will be coming to and partake in wrestling night. You know, Jerry will still be rolling around. It's going to be awesome. Um, but if I could compare our football team to a wrestler from our era, yeah, I'd go with like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. You know, like does a lot of really good things. You know, tough. Um, uh, uh, fans love it. You never know what you're really going to get. Um, but uh, uh, some things that could be cleaned up. And so, uh, you know, that's an interesting question, not one I was ready for. You know, I'm usually relatively prepared for these press conferences, but, you know, and if, if you don't appreciate Hacksaw, Jay Duggan, you know, something's wrong with you. I could come out with a two by four and a, oh, and I think that would be, yeah, and the American flag will be rolling. Um, but I don't think anybody wants to see me also run out in little blue tights and a two by four, young ho, as we're going through. But that's my best comparison. Does that work? You, you know, you, you appreciate Hacksaw Jim Duggan, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, so many wrestling legends. And again, I still greatly appreciate it. I love the fact our marketing team, all those that are involved, do such a phenomenal job tying in things that mean so much to the city of Memphis, right? The old Mid-South Coliseum and, and how much wrestling was started here in the city. I, I think it's so unique. And uh, you guys know about my relationship with Jerry King Lawler and how much uh, he means to me and, and this city and so many. So. And then what this city has meant to pro wrestling as a whole. So I think it's a neat thing that we can have that. And then so many legends have come through here. So, but uh, yeah, that's my answer. Perfect. All right, Coach, here's a um, standard question. So, okay. Um, kicking game. Yes, kicking I knew it was coming. <laughs> I was good. I can handle this one, I think. <laughs> you got to be pleased with what every aspect other than the, the field goal kicking because it's been inconsistent. Does that change your strategy when you cross the 40? And is there, are you confident going with this kicker? Jarvis, that's a great question. Um, clearly, Tristan Vandenberg's done a phenomenal job on kickoffs, um, and you could actually see the energy and excitement from the sideline on uh, the success that he was able to have. Um, you know, the punting has been solid, uh, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And, you know, we, we missed an extra point earlier in the season, and then uh, clearly we're not where we need to be on field goals. Do I expect us to be perfect? No, but every time we line up to kick call for a field goal, I expect it to be made. So. Um, we're not where we need to be. Uh, I've got great faith in Caden Costa and the rest of that unit, um, but we need to see production. Like I told our team, and actually I told our staff this morning, the bottom line is it's a results business, and that's all anybody wants to see, and results have to occur, right? If I'm dealing with our academic people, results better occur in the classroom. If I'm dealing with our athletic training room, results gotta happen, just like no different than the results gotta occur by our coaching. If this is something we're coaching and teaching, let's find it. No different if I'm lining up to kick field goals, we expect them to be made. So, um, you know, haven't made a decision one way or the other. Our plan is for Costa to continue to be. Um, the decision making, um, look, we got to play it like we is. You know, I mean, some people ask, hey, what about those fourth and twos? I don't think, you know, any of those situations would have changed. 
um, going into the game, but a lot of it ends up with you know analytics and gut feeling as well. Um, but you know, we'll see where we're at. We, we may be in a situation where we're saying, okay, hey, is this a, a go situation, kick a field goal? Um, we're already generally pretty aggressive. I don't know how much more off that spectrum we can get to, um, but uh, yeah. I've got, yeah, you watch him pregame, he's making those kicks. It's just find a way to let it translate uh, in that 60 minutes of game time. In that pregame, I watched Vandenberg in Orlando kick a 58 yarder, and he had like five or six yards to spare. Is he just not that accurate on a regular basis, or you know, what's his story? Yeah, well, Tristan's done a phenomenal job. I mean, I go back to that. How about that kickoff that went 80, 80 yards? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, that's. Yeah, into the wind. It's uh, I can't hit a driver wedge eight yards into the wind, uh, but he, you know, look, clearly he's got a phenomenal leg, and he certainly has the ability to do it. Um, but then you, know, Costa pregame was also man crushing him and very very accurate. So, um, you know, it's, it's one of those. You can't, uh, Tristan's certainly capable of doing it all, and if we've got to go in that direction, we will. But uh, you know, I still think that Caden is probably our best option at this point. Kicking is such a, a, a mental deal. Yeah. So how do you like are firm when I'm like you got to be better without like breaking the top? <laughs> Age old question. I've been dealing with 26 years, Frank. In fact, I, I almost not even like jokingly, in our staff meeting the other day, I was like, guys, I've coached every position. I mean, literally every position, but kickers. Yeah, kickers and punters. Like so, we're lining up. I'm like, is this foot the right way? Yeah. But I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to kickers. I do know that. Uh, it, there's a mental aspect to the kicking game, right? It's kind of like golf. Like, you, you can't, I don't want to sit there and, and, and chew them out because I don't know if that's going to have a negative effect on the ability to maybe go kick another kick. So it's that fine balance. I try to, uh, with kickers, I've generally tried to be, put some confidence in them, uh, belief in them. Um, no, I'm not saying I have never not chewed out a kicker, but um, with Gain, it's just because we know he's capable. You know, and he's a vet that's done it at a high level for a long time. And, and so it's just more like, hey, man, let's just get back to where you need to be. Trust your steps, trust everything else. The protection will be great and, and figure it out. So uh, it's that fine balance. Um, and he knows that. He knows that we believe in him. It's just now going out there and, and proving that he can do it. We talked about, about the receivers. Rock has obviously had some big moments throughout the season. For Demir to have that touchdown to start the game on Saturday, how big was that given kind of maybe the slower start he's got yeah, absolutely. You know, we've talked about that. It's just the um, being consistent, right, and everything, Matt. I think that was huge, right? You know, um, Demir and our receivers will be the first to tell you they haven't, on paper, haven't been as productive as they probably hoped or we had all hoped. Uh, and that was huge. You know, they, they lined up in uh, man coverage and said, okay, let's see what you got. And it was, a, you know, a concept, a new concept we put in for that game. And we were able to take advantage of the, the, the defense they played. Um, and uh, yeah, I was happy to see him get back on track. And sometimes it's just getting into a rhythm and then getting your own self-confidence. So it was huge, um, just like a lot of our guys. Uh, but yeah, I was quite pleased for him. You talked about North Texas offense being as good as they are. Obviously, the war defense has been playing well, but where will the focus be for your defense this week on if they get the high power? Yeah, I mean, they've got to be detailed. Again, North Texas is similar in a fashion to South Florida as an up-tempo. Um, you know, and, and trying to spread the ball around and then, you know, going to hit you with some zone run schemes and a variety of different things. So I think part of that is, you know, we're, we're going to at least change up what we do. We can't sit here and say, okay, hey, the game plan is a copy paste. Let's just go home. Um, but we got to be prepared because, you know, they got a quarterback in, in Chandler Morris. It's really, really good. Uh, he's really, really accurate. He actually was started at TCU and started a lot of football games and won football games at TCU. Um, you know, they got one of the leading receivers in college football. And, you know, they, they coach Morris, their head coach, has done a phenomenal job everywhere he's been. You know, Eric's put up some huge numbers. And so it's a tall task uh, because we haven't been able to see anybody stop them, uh, really. You know, Texas Tech probably had the best game plan against them, but Texas Tech is also having a fantastic year as well. So I think um, as we go about those things, you know, we're, we've got to be really detailed. we got to be able to run, you know, run to the ball effectively um, but it, it's a it's a tall tall task but if I if I know anybody like our defense is excited for this challenge um, everybody's gonna say okay well, well what about the next offense you're gonna play and for them they can't wait to get out here and start practicing so 
Um, we got to be great in all three phases, but our, our defense certainly has a, a tremendous challenge on their hands. Ryan, we've seen throughout the season, you talked to Paul, people leaving the road, people going to Portal, Todd last week left. What was that conversation like with him, and then how do you kind of react to that? Yeah, in ge general terms, uh, Joan, I'm not trying to avoid the question. I've never, and, and so just so we know, I've never talked about a guy that's no longer part of this program. So unless they're going to the NFL draft and I can speak on them. So um, I'll probably keep that policy the same. Guys that are no longer part for a variety of reasons. Um, it, it does me no good to talk to, about them. I wish them all the best. Uh, but generally when a guy has left the program, if it's going to the NFL, I'd, I'd love to talk about that. But um, guess what, for the next so many years, there's gonna be a, a handful. And we had so many that we haven't talked about. So. I, I don't want to uh, single out any individual. Just generally, though, I mean, that, I guess we talked about with UNLV a couple weeks ago, right? Like, is it just one of those things where you, I feel like every week it's a new one? Oh, I, yeah, I think, I don't think we're done. I think next week there's hopefully not on the Memphis roster, if it's, unless it's <laughs> something that we've uh, orchestrated. Um, the, uh, in the next couple weeks, we're going to see another player on another team that's no longer part of the roster. I think you're going to see teams where guys, um, you know, or, or may find the way to say, hey, it's time for me to start preparing for the draft. You know, um, a few years ago, the first year of COVID, uh, we had a, a, a wide receiver uh, came to us on a Wednesday night before the UCF game, practiced that Tuesday, Wednesday, and said it, he was going to go prepare for the NFL draft. And uh, obviously, he didn't make it to the NFL. We went on to beat, get our first win ever versus UCF in a 51 49 shootout. Um, so, like, once that occurred, I realized, man, the, the next man up mentality. Uh, but I think we're going to, Joan, I think that's part of what's going to happen in college football. I think you hear a lot of commissioners and a lot of people saying, man, this is not, probably not good for the sport. Um, but it's, you know, here and there, you know, I've got enough focus uh, each week on our current opponent to figure it out. But obviously, that it's something that's occurring. I'm sure fans aren't thrilled with it. Um, I know head coaches aren't necessarily in favor, but ultimately, if it's what's best for the players, that's probably the direction we'll go. What was your message going up 14 0 early? And about fourth, did that induce a mindset change or anything going forward? For like play calling? No, not at all. Um, like I said, so I, I believe it was the two of the first three drives we scored, uh, and then we saw a different defense after that, and we, we need to do a better job of attacking that. Um, uh, you know, it was probably, you know, maybe we weren't as prepared for the the sun, or as we should have been, all those things was a little bit warmer than the ability that we've had to practice in, but no excuses um, for that stuff. And you always tell your guys, regardless, like you don't want uh, your mindset to change. You guys got to remember versus North Texas last year, we were up pretty big at halftime. And the second half, we were fighting our tails off, right? So you're constantly trying to tell your guys at halftime, hey, it's a score zero zero, it's a whole new half, go out and play football at a higher level. Um, yeah, someone was sharing with me the Purdue Illinois game from this past weekend. Like, what kind of occurred there? And you guys said, "Well, I'm sure those guys uh, for Illinois probably went in the locker room and said, okay, we got it, yeah, you know, and, and we're fine.' And then next thing you know, uh, it's a furious comeback. So uh, that's the challenge always with 18 and 23 year olds keeping the focus. But I truly, in my heart of hearts, believe um, that our guys had the focus, and we we obviously got to put our our guys in better situations with play calls and continue to find ways to, to uh, make sure we're having success and clicking all cylinders on offense. I know coaches pay comparisons. Can you remember the last time you had a corner trio as good as Kobe, Greg, and when they go? Yeah, so, you know, Greg's been predom playing predominantly safety. Um, but, you know, one guy, you know, I bet you guys have heard me been talking quite a bit about uh, how excited we are with Kobe Miner's addition. Um, but Davion Ross is, and I, and I was just thinking about this the other day, Davion Ross is playing really, really good football. Um, people forget he was, a, you know, I think a third-team All-American uh, at Eastern Kentucky, maybe as a redshirt freshman. He actually went to Eastern Kentucky as a wide receiver, which I didn't even know. Um, I had an NFL scout actually talking to me about him. And um, went to Eastern Kentucky as a wide receiver, was, a, I believe, a freshman All-American or third-team All-American uh, in FCS. Came to us, really was in and out of the starting lineup uh, his first year here, then a full-time starter. Then he got hurt last year, which should have been his senior year, and was out for the whole season. And, you know, uh, comes back and just under the radar, quiet young man. You know, he's not the biggest in stature, but going out there and playing tremendous football. And it's, it's great to see. 
Uh, he, he's doing a really, really nice job and pleased with him. You know, you got to see DJ Bell get in the game some. Um, so it's good. You always, you can never have enough depth in the secondary, you know. Um, people forget, and I, I do want to make mention of this. I don't know when he'll be back, but uh, I believe Cortland Marsh at some point will be back on track to, to be back this season. Um, I believe we'll be able at some point, uh, not this week. And so I've got great respect for Coach Morris. I'm not sitting there finagling the depth chart uh, as uh, some people like to do. Um, I, I got great faith that Cortland Marsh may be able to join us uh, in a few weeks. I don't know what game that was, but when, as soon as I, I the opportunity for him to be able to play, I can't wait to share that news with you guys as well. One more question. Cortland Marsh, if he if if only plays four games, does he have another opportunity? Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you,